In this screencast, I'm going to show you what the continuity equation in integral form looks like and suggest some different examples where it can be used. So the continuity equation in integral form is just the conservation of mass applied to a control volume, which is defined as a finite region of space. So this region of space is chosen by the observer, but it's generally straightforward, such as fluid that's bounded by a pipe. So the governing equation says here that the time rate of change of the mass in the system, which is a collection of unchanging contents, has to equal zero. And we can define this m of the system, the mass of the system, as the integral of rho dv, so that's mass times a differential volume over the entire system. We can then use the Reynolds transport theorem to write this as a material derivative. And what this says is that the time rate of change of the mass of the system, right here, so we took this, this, and placed it there, is equal to the time rate of change of the mass of the contents of the control volume. Notice that it's integrated over the control volume, plus the net rate of flow of mass through the control surfaces. And recall that this can mean one control surface, two control surfaces, any number of control surfaces where the fluid enters and or exits the control volume. So note that the system and control volume can be, but aren't always the same as I show you here. So at some instant in time, this dashed line can denote the control volume where the solid is the system. So there are a number of different ways we can use this equation. So we can have a control volume that's fixed, or it can be moving. It can be at steady state, or it can be unsteady state. It can be non-deforming, or it can be deforming. And what we mean by deforming is that the control volume actually shrinks or expands. We can also have uniform velocities or non-uniform velocities or a combination of both of them. And when I say that, that means that you can have a uniform velocity coming into the control volume through one control surface, but a non-uniform velocity exiting the control volume. So these all use the same basic equation that I showed you up here. However, due to the changes made, the equations can look quite different. So this allows us to solve problems that have varying conditions. So here's a number of examples that we can have where we use this equation. So we can have a fixed, non-deforming control volume at steady state with uniform velocity. And that's the easiest kind of problem to analyze. We can then have a fixed non-deforming control volume at steady state now with non-uniform velocity. What I mean by non-uniform velocity is that the velocity is a function of the area. Now we can have a moving non-deforming control volume at steady state with uniform velocity. And of course, we can have it with non-uniform velocity, and we can have a combination of any one of these. We can have now a fixed deforming control volume at steady state with uniform velocity and a fixed unsteady state non-deforming control volume with uniform velocity. 
And if you click on any of these links, you can see examples of how to use the basic equation for all these different cases.